but I'm comparing myself to another human. So, and I feel good about that. Like, okay, well, man, I feel pretty good about me compared to that dude. The problem is we are comparing ourselves to a holy and righteous God. And when you start doing that and you realize, oh, I don't stack up, right? Mm -hmm. There is so much that is flawed in me. At that moment, you you can start understand how some of these things work. And it, for me, it's just brought me a lot more peace because the rarest commodity on earth is peace of mind. We got all these guys out here that are stressed out, anxiety, you know, just through the roof. They're trying to get to the next ladder, next ladder, next ladder. Like nobody knows what contentment is anymore. What's going on, guys? Welcome to the Modern Man Podcast, where we connect men in pursuit of their potential. Join us as we embrace discomfort, cultivate community, and put wind in each other's sails. Now, if you're ready to take your personal and professional growth to the next level, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to the podcast. And don't forget to check out the Noble Knights Mastermind Group, where you'll find the support, accountability, and mentorship you need to achieve your goals. Join us and become a part of a community of like-minded men on a mission to improve themselves and elevate their capacity for life. I'm excited to have on the podcast uh, another North Carolinian believer, podcast host, coach, writer, husband, and dad, Chris Granger, joining us on the call. Chris, thanks for hopping on, man. Uh, it's an absolute honor to be here. Absolutely. And I, I always make sure to uh, allow the guests in the audience to to get acquainted without me interrupting, without me getting in the way. So I'd love to give you the microphone, give you the stage, give you the podcast and let you address the folks yourself, introduce yourself in your own words. And then we can kind of get talking about the line within your mission and uh, a bit of your story as well. I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm just a guy who messes up a lot. And then I learn from those lessons and try to help other people. So it's all about <laughs> serving others, man. To be honest, it's uh, everything I do when I wake up in the morning is how can I help someone else today? And that's what it's all about. That's what's led me to the line within us. And, you know, I've had 20 something years in the electrical industry as well and had a lot of success there. And it's, and I want to think back through the success as I always came back to, because I like to take care of people. I just like to help people. So it's just, it's just, I don't know, it's just part of who I am, but, uh, you know, I get a lot of joy and fulfillment out of just helping men in particular these days, just be the leader that God intends them to be. And I talk a lot about, you know, how do we take care of our minds and our bodies and career and finances and being better husbands and better dads and uh, much of what you talk about. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this one and diving in. Yeah, no, 100 percent. And I could tell a lot of what you talk about is service. Right. And and what's mm -hmm. ironic is I find uh, a recurring topic for the modern man, for men to feel fulfilled. It's usually being of service to others or being an asset, not a liability. We just want to know that we're doing a good job and that we're needed and we're providing to others. and. and and I hear that recurring theme of service in you and something I wrote down as an initial question, just kind of doing the deep dive through your bio, through your history or whatnot. And you mentioned the man that God called us to be. Uh, who is the man God called us to be? For anybody listening who's kind of maybe feeling less than fulfilled or they're not really sure how they're navigating the world, uh, what's what's that spark that they're missing? Well, I think some of it, it's all individual, but at, at the core you know, when God created us in his image, you know, we're, we're, we're put on earth <laughs> to protect and to provide and ultimately to preside too. And that's leadership. So, and those three areas, man, we, we, we got to start stepping up because each man out there, whether they believe it or not, I've, I've talked to so many guys like, man, Chris, you don't even know, I mean, I, I, I can't do this dad thing. And I say, look, God handpicked you, handpicked you to be the leader of your family. Now you got to step up and do it. But I mean, it's in us. We just got to pull it out. And I think sometimes the evil one, he's trying to trick us up and, and throw all, throw us off track. And the more we can recognize it and recognize what our traps are, man, we can, we can overcome. Yeah. What, what are those traps? Because I, I feel like we can step in them quickly, easily. And uh, yep. like I say, the, you know, the chains of habit are often too, too weak to feel until they're too strong to break. So what are the traps that we need to consciously be aware of and try and avoid? So there's three, there, there's, there's just three and it's in scripture. And I brought this up this morning in a group that I was leading uh, within the line within us. It's the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes and the pride of life. That's the three traps. That's the only three things that's going to trip up any man. So if, here's the question. If you're a man out there and you're listening right now, if you were Satan, if you were, if you were the evil ones, I'm a Christian man. So I talk a lot of Christian stuff. So let's just say if you're a bad dude. Okay. And you're trying to trip you up 
and you want to make you fall today, how would you attack you? Right. Mm -hmm. How would you attack you? What would you go against you? Like, is it, is it pride for me? It's pride. Like I, I'm a prideful dude. I like the, I like the podcast doing well. I want the community growing. You know what I'm talking about? We look at all the stats, right? For some guys, it's the, the lust of the eyes. Right. And that's the stuff that we chase. Like bigger house, bigger car, better job, all the stuff out there, money, finances, lust of the eye, that stuff just draws us in. And then you got the lust of the flesh. <clears throat> and we, we, I kind of, we all know what that is, right? Mm -hmm. We start chasing the things we shouldn't be chasing. We're looking at that chick we shouldn't be looking at because we married and all these different types of things. Like when you start chasing those things in this world, man, it's so easy to get caught up. And here's the thing I've learned the most, Ted, like when people think of the, the devil or Satan or whatever you want to call it, they think of this ugly thing. And I'm like, no, bro. He's beautiful. It's because he's going to trip you up with beautiful stuff. It's not the ugly stuff, man. It's the beautiful stuff of this world that trips us up. So just think about that. If you were going to try to take you out, what would you, how would you go about it? And that's what he's going to do each and every time. Nice. You said the flesh, the eyes, and the pride. Mm -hmm. The flesh, the eyes, and the pride. And we know how, how vulnerable that, that could be. Um, you, you mentioned before, you know, a guy that just messes up and, and I say on the podcast over and over, you know, I'm a work in progress. And as men, I think we're, it's the journey more so than the destination. You know, yeah. we, we wake up every day and we try and we attempt. And I, and I even remember you mentioned, I think you quoted Jordan Peterson as, and we, we competed against the person we were before. Right. Uh, what were some of the experiences you were able to overcome maybe in your personal life that helped give you the conviction to, to, to lead uh, this movement, the line within us and, and gave you the conviction to be a better man today? I think some of the areas were just quite frankly failures, right? So, I mean, I, I, when my oldest daughter, she just turned 13, when she was born, I was 330 pounds, right? I mean, I was, uh, I was, you know, my late twenties on blood pressure medicine, had sleep apnea, the worst case of sleep apnea that they said they'd ever seen. I couldn't drive more than 20 minutes. I mean, it was, it was crazy. Yeah. And then, you know, so I've gone through a weight loss journey. Then I've, I've, walked through a divorce. Unfortunately, I had a wife that was unfaithful to me. And I had to walk through what that feels like from a man's standpoint. When your woman steps out and you feel that, like, why am I not enough? Right? Like, why she leave me? Like, what's going on? What's, why is this dude so much better than me? And she left me with two kids, right? <clears throat> and left us, like two little girls, three years old and five years old. I'm sitting there as a single dad, like trying to figure out how to be a single dad to two, two little girls and learn how to do hair and all the things that you got to do, right? But I did that, right? So I mean, so that was a that was a setback. And then, you know, my, probably one of the most recent challenges is uh, losing a child. So we lost a child, and Sorry, uh, so been able to walk through that. So it's just meant all these different things, you know, throughout my throughout my life. And I've just I've learned each and every one of them. Yeah, they're fence posts and <clears throat> they're they're big opportunities. But I apologize for about that, Ted. But I've been on that tractor. But at the end of the day, what each and every one of those things, man have given me opportunities to to either run from God or turn to him. And I've chose to turn to him. And I've been able to, because of those situations in my life, serve so many other men, you know, that have gone through similar stuff. It may not be exactly the same, but some of them have gone through stuff, have gone through similar uh, situations. And I've just learned that, you know what, God puts us through these trials for a reason. And we go through those trials of how we embrace it, how we step up as a man means so much because you never know who who's out there right now who's suffering the same type of thing. Yeah, man, I appreciate you sharing that, Chris. Yeah, you know, sorry for the loss and and you know so much of what we go through we internalize. Right. We 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 let it ruminate, trying to give purpose to the pain, mm -hmm. and, and what we don't realize is the purpose of that pain is ironically the service and, and you know our test being the testimony to help somebody else through that right where we've mentioned when you're in the middle of the storm the only person that can really get you out is maybe someone who's been there before and who could speak on that level be like look you eye to eye and say you know man to man i know what you're going through i've been there i've made it i survived you can too right and, and sometimes that's what us as men look for when we're in those dark places when we're in those those uh, areas of solitude and we're just right. keeping to ourselves and we're going through the darkest, darkest points. We think our problems are our own. And that community aspect is really what helps pull us out and, and take us to the other side. Absolutely. And that's why it's so important. And that's why so many guys struggle because outside of high school, when you graduate, you leave and you leave college or whatever. So many of us, we don't have friends. We have acquaintances, 
we had we had some guys that maybe are our 5 p.m guys but after five they got to go home right now it's kind of like the kids when the mom used to call us we got we got to stop playing but we don't have how many of those 3 a.m guys like when it's going down like you can call them at three three o'clock in the morning and they're gonna come and we got to have more of that and that's what community is all about yeah i would even piggyback off that uh 3 a.m guy is if anything were to happen to me in the dire situation, I'm speaking from a personal area where my parents are in New York. I'm in North Carolina. They're hundreds of miles away. Our family's at a distance. If something were to happen to me and we needed help quick, my wife says, I'm calling Charles. She she knows my, my he's my 3 a.m. guy, but he's also who my wife will go to if I need something and my, you know, I'm incapacitated. And that's something I'd like the guys to think about is, you know, the person you care about the most, if something were to happen to you, who does that person reach out on your behalf? And are they aware of that relationship that you have? Because I think that's hugely valuable to have as a man. You're, you're so right on that. And I call those types of relationships uh, refrigerator rights. That's the guys that can come into your house. They can get that milk. They can grip, go to the fridge and get whatever they want, right? And I just feel like so many times we just don't have that. We look at Instagram. You look at, tic, uh, at TikTok, Facebook, uh, even LinkedIn. And you have all these different types of connections. But do you really know any of them, right? And we just keep chasing these vanity metrics versus – actually opening up and letting more men into your life and what that takes though is vulnerability mm. and nobody wants to do that because nobody wants to be vulnerable you, you want you feel like you got to have it all together and got it all figured out you don't ever want to show a kink in the armor and i'm like look bro that's just not real you're not going to ever live up to that so the more kinks you show i just know for me i got guys coming to me now bro they tell me all the time like I'm struggling with this issue of pornography or i got this issue going on with my marriage or my kids and they only do that because I'm authentic and I really try to be transparent and open and honest. And then you actually got to care. And if you don't have any buddies out there, like what you and I are talking about, are, are you that type of man yourself? Like you mm -hmm. have to be that type of man first and then you draw other men to you. So it's just, it all starts with self, man, and, and making and getting ourselves right. hundred percent. And and anybody that listens to the podcast, they hear me say all the time, you know, I, I talk about our, our group is the noble Knights and on the logo, right. there's a crack in the helmet. Right. And that's intentional because that's dope. I like that. Yeah. yeah. I, I always say an armor without any vulnerabilities has never been a battle. And if I'm looking how to navigate this thing called life, do I want the novice who's never been to battle or do right. I want the man who has yeah. the the dents, the kinks, the scratches, and they're still standing. Right. <laughs> right. And that's why it's so important. And, and, and I just got to give you your flowers, Chris, that that's something I do recognize within you. You're a genuine man. You're a genuine dude. You're very, as a matter of fact, what you see is what you get. And I think people can feel that and resonate with that, which is, right. is probably why the work you do with the line within us, has grown so much. So I'd want to ask for any guy listening who maybe just feels something missing, what are some of the steps and how can we find some of that joy and fulfillment in the midst of the storm, right? In, in the midst of the trials and tribulations in our dark days, how can we find the purpose of the pain and, and really that fulfillment and that growth that we search for so badly? I think a lot of times you just got to stop trying to find it here. Right. And sometimes you're not going to find it. Like when I was holding my, my, my lifeless child, like it was really hard to, in that, in those moments, holding her to find any joy anywhere. Right. It's just, it's, it's pain. Like there's no pain, like kid pain. I say that all the time. Right. And, and as if you're a father and you've held your child and you know what it feels like to just look at your son or your daughter, you know, there's nothing like that. But then when, when, when they're not breathing and you've lost them, like, what do you do? How do you find joy in those moments? And I found sometimes in those moments, you just got to embrace the suck. And, and I wish there was another way around it, but just not. You just have to embrace the suck, but you also have to figure, remember, you have a, two choices in every one of those situations. You can completely take this right here, and I hold my Bible because it, it, it never goes far from me. You can say, you know what? I'm done. I'm out of here. I'm doing things my way. I got this because obviously God's way it ain't working. This situation I'm in sucks. And it's, it's all your fault. Or you can say, you know what? <clears throat> These things have happened to me. I'm going through this for a reason. I may not know why right now, but I'm just going to trust you, God, because obviously there's something bigger than us out there. And if you just choose to run towards him in those trials, I'm telling you, just run towards him. It's the old Buffalo saying, right? Buffaloes and cows, cows run away, buffalo run towards the storm. If you just run towards the storm and cling to him through it, He's the only way that's going to fulfill you because there's nothing in this world 
that's going to make you happy, that's going to make you feel better, <laughs> because all that stuff is temporary. The only permanent joy that we can ever get is when we have that relationship with, with Christ, and that's it. And once we get something like that, the rest of it falls into place, man, and you can find joy and you can find opportunities. I still, and you know, I'll never know <clears throat> until I get to heaven why he took my daughter, but I do know that why, since he took her, I've had so many opportunities to help others you know, grieve or, or even think about going through processes like this. And I'm trying to use it for good because the Bible does tell us we, you know, we go through these things for his glory, for his good. So just try to make the best out of it. So, I mean, there's no magic formula. There's nothing. If there's a Christian out there that says, well, just follow him and it all gets better. They're lying. Don't listen to them. Like it's not, that's, that's not what it's about. It's not about uh, easier, but it is about better. It's a mm. better way, right? It's just so much better once you surrender your life and, and let him guide you. And I think that provides so much good in the world. Um, I think it provides so much, so many benefits for people in terms of, you think of the people you were able to help through their grieving process. And right. because we ask why, and, and and it's funny because, you know, my day job being a meteorologist and most people say, okay, you're a man of science. And I say, listen, science will describe how, like that, that's the work of science for me. Right. But it never answers why. Right. right. Like I can tell you how all day up, down, left and right. But the answer to why I don't have that. Right. <laughs> and and I've stopped looking for that mm -hmm. because I understand that. Listen, as much as the how comes about, the why is beyond my control and beyond my power. All I could do is is stick to my faith, step co courageously forward. And right. Just show up, just show up each right. and every single day the best way I can. Right. Um, and those There's, battles. Oh, please, please continue. No, I was just going to say, man, because you, you hear some people, they get turned off from things that we're talking about right now from faith standpoint, because they say, well, why do good things, bad things happen to good people, right? You hear that stuff all the time. And a lot of times guys, they take that very, very serious as well when something happens in their life. And they'll just say, man, you know what? I'm done. I'm out. You know, I, I'm not even believing in this, in this, you know, church stuff anymore. And I'm sitting here like, y'all, you, you missed a point because it's not you know, why do bad things happen to good people? It's your definition of good. Like, what is your definition of good? Your definition of good is screwed up because mm. good, like if I compare me, you know, I can't compare me to you in a gym because obviously you would destroy me. But <laughs> let's just say I compare me to a guy on, on death row, okay, that's killed somebody. In mm. comparison from me to him, I've done pretty well. To this date, I haven't killed anybody. I've come close with my kids, but I haven't actually done it, right? So it's just one of those things. I haven't, I haven't killed anybody. But I'm comparing myself to another human. So, and I feel good about that. Like, okay, well, man, I feel pretty good about me compared to that dude. The problem is we are comparing ourselves to a holy and righteous God. And when you start doing that and you realize, oh, I don't stack up, right? Mm -hmm. There is a, so much that is flawed in me. At that moment, you you can start understand how some of these things work, and it, for me, it's just brought me a lot more peace because the rarest commodity on earth is peace of mind. We got all these guys out here that are stressed out, anxiety, you know, just through the roof. They're trying to get to the next ladder, next ladder, next ladder. Like nobody knows what contentment is anymore, and mm. peace of mind. And I'm just like, man, I know how to help you. I know how to help you get this, but it first starts with surrendering. And when you start talking like that kind of stuff, they're like. Tell me more, or they're like, all right, I'm done with this, right? Just one or two. It's, it's just usually very black and white. Yeah, man, that that's so true. I want to touch on that peace and contentment aspect because I think a lot of guys listening, a lot of our listeners, they're ambitious, they're business owners, they got side hustles. For for clarity, uh, you have you host two podcasts, you've been in leadership roles, you run the line within us, uh, um, engineering manager as well, I believe. Like so. When people hear you say peace and contentment, I think it's easy for our ambitious guys to be like, oh, man, he's just chilling. But that's not the case. I think we could be ambitious and still be content and peaceful. Touch on that a little bit more because it, it took me a long time to learn this lesson. And I'll be honest, I'm still learning it. Like, how can I sit in the contentment? How can I sit in the peace? Because sometimes I'm like a little rabbit. I'm trying to get to the next thing. Trying to get, and, and, I, and I lose that. And I know I'm probably not the only one that struggles with that. So right. touch on that a little bit more. Well, I don't know if you, if you guys are going to like the answer, but it, it comes down. Are you doing it your way? Or are you doing it God's way? It's because mm -hmm. if you are doing things that God's called you to do and you're putting it all into it, and he's going, he's not calling us to easy either, bro. I mean, he's calling us to work. So, I mean, it is hard. You, you mentioned a couple of podcasts and the job and, 
you know, I'm doing masterminds. I got all these, I'm developing a leadership thing that, uh, program. So there's constantly things going, but what I have, have learned is, man, you can, you can get very easily wrapped up and busy and feel mm -hmm. good about yourself. And like our calendars can look like, you know, just like a bag of Skittles blew up on him, you know, with all the meetings we got. Right. And, and you can, at the end of the day, you feel like you accomplished something, but I always challenge people like, what did you do? What God called you to do today? Like you did what you had to do. You had the meetings, the corporate meetings, the board meetings, whatever they were, your one-on-ones, all these types of engagements. But did you do what he called you to do? Because that's a different ball game. And once you start thinking about that, well, Chris, well, how do I know what he wants me to do? Well, you got to pray. You got to talk to him. Got to spend some time in the word. And if you start doing these things, it'll become a whole lot more clearer for you on what the next steps are. Because you never know, bro. And I, when I tell this to guys, they, they, they either get it or they don't. You never know. If the blessing that that God is, is is has out there for you is just on the other side of that next step of obedience, if you just did that next thing of obedience, you never know what He's going to bless you with. But if you keep doing things your way, I got this. I'm going to do things my way. I'm not worried about anything else. At that point, you're never going to find contentment because you're always going to be thinking through what's the what's the next thing I got to do? What's the next thing I need to do? When you start thinking like that, bro, it's just going to wear you down because eventually you're going to run out of ideas or or you're just going to burn out. And that's why if you have if you're fueled up, if you if you're plugged into the word and you're letting him guide you, and you're just taking that next step of obedience each and every day. And you're not for the for the lion. I'm not worried where we're going to be in 10 years. I just want to know where we're going to be today. And then we're going to figure it out tomorrow. We're just going to keep doing that. Right. I think yeah. that's the type of contentment that's brought me a lot of peace. You know, I, I'm also a visionary. I love to, I want to know the next 10 steps, but I usually trip up. So God only gives me about one. That's just the way he rolls with me. I guess because I'm hard headed too, but uh, I think so many guys out there, man, you could find so much more contentment if you just slow down and just and just listen and give him an opportunity to speak to you. He will speak. You just gotta gotta open that door. Yeah, I think my biggest um, revelation with obedience because I could see guys thinking like, okay, fine, I'm obedient, put my hands up, do do what I gotta do. I used to think for the longest time obedience was just uh, passive. Kind of like, all right, let whatever's going to happen is going to happen. But then I thought and I realized, you know, when I was a kid and my mom said, take out the trash, obedient was an action. You mm. know, being being obedient was doing something. Um, right. Not just letting what happens happens, but actually taking action. And and oftentimes I didn't want to take out the trash at that moment. <laughs> That's <laughs> and, right. And sometimes obedience means doing what you don't want to necessarily do. Or why do you want to do this? And, you know, that that could be hard. Right. Because like you said, sometimes we want to do it our way or, or we sometimes do. we think we know better. Yeah, we don't. <laughs> we don't. That's the sad truth. Those um, three words. I got this, man. They're so scary, you know, and we have to be careful as men not, not to go down those traps. And, you know, another, the one last word I'll share with you before we move is, is, is meek. Most of the guys, when, when guys mm -hmm. hear that word meek, they're like, they associated with weak. And, you know, I don't know if you did that or not, but most guys, when I think meek, they think weak. And I'm like, no, bro, that's not it. Meek is control power, controlled aggression. Like when you take a horse, a couple thousand pound Clydesdale, right? Mm -hmm. My little 13 year old, 11 year old daughters can lead that thing around the arena if they wanted to. Why? Are they stronger than that horse? Absolutely not. But that horse is under control and he controls that power. He's led by that bit. And that's what we are as men. Like we just need to understand we we are we're supposed to be aggressive. There's supposed to be some things that come out of us that the world doesn't like at all times. But if we can control it, that control power and submit, and that submission for me is submitting to Christ. Man, there's so much that we can do. Man, that's fantastic. The meek. Mm. What are what are men lacking when it comes to their health, wealth, and self? Because I know that's what you focus a lot on yeah. with the with the line within us. I think from the health standpoint, I see so many guys, they're either completely, you know, on board like you, you're, you obviously, you spend time at the gym, you're working out, you're taking care of the body, or they're just not completely. There you go. Right. <clears throat> and I think for Christian men in particular, we have to remember our body's a temple. I mean, it literally says in scripture, that our body's a temple. And too many times we're treating it like a sleazy motel. I'm like, no, bro. I mean, this is, let's take care of this thing, you know, and that was back to my story at three 30, like sleazy hotel right now. It's not the rich Carlton, but he, you know, it's, I'm taking care of it. Right. I'm, I'm taking doing the things I need to do. And uh, so, I mean, I think that's a big area. And then the mind, 
so many guys, we, we let these things, where's it at? I know it's, I know it's close because I'm addicted to it. This smartphone right here. Mm -hmm. We let these things trip us up and drag us down. And from a mind standpoint, you keep putting that trash in, you're going to get trash out. That's just that's classic engineering programming language right there. So we have to be careful what we consume. So how much godly material we consuming? Because most guys, if they go to a sermon twice a month, they feel like they're good. Like, I'm good, man. I'm good. I'm like, no, bro. Would you just eat twice a month? They're like, what are you talking about? I'm like, so spiritually fed. Like, you wouldn't just go twice a month with eating and, and eat and not eat any other days because you would be starving. You'd be ready to kill somebody. Like, you have to be constantly growing and 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 uh, developing yourself uh, from a mindset standpoint, particularly around Christ. And and if you're trying to to let, if you think the church is going to raise your kids, that ain't their job. So I have to always check guys on that too. And then from a wealth standpoint, it's very, it comes down to one word and it's stewardship. Mm -hmm. If I can ever get guys around the mindset of stewardship, of what that actually looks like. And a steward is nothing more than a manager of someone else's property. That is not anything that's in my checkbooks right here too. So anything in this checkbook is God's. Like, what does that look like? And how do we, how can that be reflected? I try to teach that. And then from a, from a self standpoint, better husbands, better dads, that all comes to, to who we are at home. Right. We some so many times we give the best of who we are in our jobs and our careers and our side hustles, whatever they are, and the family gets the leftovers. And I'm like, no, man, like that can't be it. Like kids spell love, T I M E. You got to remember that. They just want you. So that overtime you think you're doing, I'm doing it for the family. I'm doing it for the family. No, no, no. Mm -hmm. Maybe you need to check some things. Like maybe it needs to go back to stewardship and let's look at our budget. But I think I saw so really focus on those elements, but it's all tied to spiritual leadership. Like we have to be the spiritual leaders of our home. We are responsible for teaching our kids about salvation, about Christ, about, about church, about, you know, just being morals and things like that, that you don't outsource that, you know, you wouldn't outsource like your role as a husband to, mm -hmm. to another bro. Would you like, no, it sounds ridiculous. Why would you do that? Why would you think you would do that with your family? from a spiritual standpoint. I mean, it's just, when you start thinking, talking like that, it usually it clicks for guys mm -hmm. and we just, all right, now let's, let's take this serious and let's move to the next level. And that's what we try to do. Yeah, no, hundred percent. And I think a lot of it is people say all the time, I would die for my kids. That's, that's great. But are you willing live to them? live for your kids? Yeah. Are, are you going to set that example and, and give them something to aspire to? And, that's right. And, and a lot of times we could we could talk until we're blue in the face, but they're gonna do what we do, not what we say. That's and right. We, we model that behavior for a lot of parents are saying, Oh, my kids are always on the phone. Well, are you always on your phone? Right, right. Because that's how they learn and that's how they see things. W what does it look like when we when we tap into the lion within us, when we find our roar, or when we are operating with our daily practices? And I say practices with intention because it is a practice. It's a yep. continuous activity. What does that look like when we are we are stepping in our faith? We we are embracing the word and we are moving forward with that fulfillment, knowing God's got this. I think it just shows up in what you do and no matter where you're at, right? So wherever your feet are, if you're unleashing a line within, no matter if you're at work in a board meeting or if you're at, at home at the dinner table or hanging out with your wife on, on a date night. If you are there and you're intentional and, you, and you're actually locked in and you're bringing your best you there to ultimately honor and glorify God, that's what matters. And that's what, and, and ultimately that's going to move the ball down the field. And this goes to everywhere. Like when you're in the grocery store behind the people who have 15 things in their cart and it says you should have 10 in this line and you don't lose your mind and you actually maybe have a conversation with that person or at the, or, or on, in, at the, uh, uh, getting gas and you actually just strike up conversations with other people. If it's just wherever you're at, look for opportunities to serve people. I guarantee you, you will find them. You just have to look for them. And I mean, we just finished doing a little renovation here. We just moved and this, the studio just got finished last week. So I'm so pumped because I was like, man, I hope this thing gets done for this interview, but it got done. But man, we had contractors all over the place, right? I must have laid hands and prayed on three or four contractors during this job. And this is, this is like weird. You know, sometimes these contracts, I'll just, I, they ask me what I do. I, I, I help people learn about Jesus and be better men. And a lot of men here working and the flooring guy, he spoke very little English, but when I said Jesus, he lit up. And, uh, 
Mm -hmm. I ended up laying my hands on him, praying right here in the studio, uh, uh, just a, a prayer of of uh, abundance for him because he had just recently lost his brother and all these things, and and he's trying to get his business going. And man, we finished, and he had tears in his eyes, and it, I mean, it was just he was just lit up. But I look for those opportunities. I just I, I had the blinders off now, and I recognize now they've always been there. Mm -hmm. I just wasn't looking for them. So I think if we do that type of work and we start understanding whatever field we're in, you don't have to be a doggone pastor to do mission work, man. What are you talking about? Every one of us, whatever field you're in right now, like you said, you, you're a meteorologist, like that's your mission field, right? For me, electrical industry, that's my mission field. Like wherever you are, that's where God's going to use you. You just have to be willing to step in and let him. And if you do that, I'm telling you, you better be careful because he's going to use you. Oh man. Yeah. <laughs> My wife and I, we have a, a recurring prayer. We pray at night together. And um, one of the things we, we pray for is, you know, that we could be uh, instruments of God on earth, man. whatever that looks like. And, you know, sometimes it's helping, helping others. One time my wife was leaving for work. She had her lunchbox and she had a bottle of water and uh, some crackers and, and snacks. And I'm like, what are you doing? Like, you already have lunch. She's like, oh, well, you know, there's a homeless guy uh, on the corner that she sees while she's passing. She wanted to give him some water and some food. And I'm like, oh, yeah, you know, that's, I would not, I didn't think of that. She, I didn't know right. that was your day, but you know, just understanding that we, at the very least, whatever our situation, whoever is listening, watching on YouTube, if you hear this, you are in a position to be a blessing to someone. Amen. And it just takes a little bit of effort and, and not even much effort. It just takes, like you said, taking the blinders off and identifying that opportunity right. and it can mean the world to somebody else. Um, it absolutely can. Chris, this has been amazing. I want to make sure folks can, can follow you, follow the line within us, hear more of the work that you're doing, tap into your group. If they resonate with that more than the noble yep. Knights and the modern man, uh, because that's the, the mission here is, is, is spreading the opportunity for us men to grow no matter what platform that's on. So I'd love for them to have those resources. How can they connect? Yeah, I mean, the easiest way, just head over to thelionwithin.us. That's a T-H-E. Don't forget that on the front. And it is a .us, not a .com. But uh, trust me, it, we have all our resources down the main page. We have a 30 days to unleash your line within. Lots of guys jump on that. It's just a series of messages around leadership on how to be a better leader. That's all tied to biblical uh, understanding and principles. So everything in line with, within us is faith-based uh, from a realm of Christian standpoint. So uh, be expecting that if you get, if you come over and, and it turns you off, it's all good. You can unsubscribe. You don't worry about it. And then we have our podcast. We have our community. We have our summit leadership development. All that's on the main site, but the line within us is the best place to connect. And if you want to send me an email, Chris at the line within us, that's my email. Send it to me directly and we'll uh, have a conversation. I love connecting with guys. I've, I've connected with three guys today already. Uh, just having conversations, just hearing their testimony, right? It's not sales or anything like that. It's just generally trying to connect with people and seeing how I can help them. So, uh, yeah, hit me, send me an email. We'll have a conversation. Man, that's fantastic, man. And I'll have those links in the show notes. And, and thank you. God bless you for all the work you're doing. You um, too. Last question. Uh, and maybe you've touched on it from your experiences before, but uh, what is something you've seen or something that's happened to you that shapes the way you view the world as a man? Oh, that's a great question. Something I've seen or has happened to me. I I, I kind of go back to uh, losing my daughter. I, I know I brought that up a couple times, but when, when I lost her, the reason I bring that up is is I had I recognize as a man, you have to uh, you have to grieve with your wife. You have to you have to you have to learn how to grieve with her. And and uh, and grief for uh, grieving for our spouses and for our children looks different than men. Like a lot of times we get through. I just know me and a lot of guys I, I, that I meet with and talk to, we can, we just grieve differently. We can move on faster. Sometimes there's just, there's something in our DNA, but a lot of times uh, our spouses need to see us grieve. Like, don't feel like you can't, like you have to be this macho type dude all the time. Some of the most impactful times I had with my wife were, were both of us are just soaking in tears. And in those moments, uh, the only person that was carrying us was Jesus because we were both broken and we just, but if I were to try to like put up this facade or just this, this, this wall and just keep all the emotions out, we not, we wouldn't have got through it the way we did. And and not that we got through it perfectly, but we, we got through it and we got through it together and to the point where now we can help other people, like I mentioned. So I just said, I didn't encourage you guys, just if you're going through some stuff, 
just making sure you take the time to show that emotion to your spouse. And it may not be losing a child. Maybe it's losing a job or, or, or you know, uh, having some some major setbacks from a health standpoint. Show that vulnerability, particularly to your spouse. And I think if you do that, you're going to see your relationship just blossom and grow the way it, me and my wife, the way it has with us. Is it going to be perfect? No, but it's going to help you guys definitely work through these things together. So I guess that would be some parting advice. Yeah, no, absolutely. That That's fantastic. Chris Granger, believer, podcast host, coach, writer, husband, and dad. It, it's been an absolute pleasure. I thank you for taking the time and, and just sharing your sharing your heart with us today. It's been amazing. It's been an honor. Thank you so much. Yeah, my pleasure. I'm going to share some of the uh, fantastic words of wisdom you left along the way because I know a lot of folks are maybe driving or working out, going for a run, or or maybe just cleaning while listening to the podcast. And the first thing we started with was, you know, service and we got to step up men listening. You need to step up. God has singly single-handedly picked you to protect, provide, and preside for your family. And that is going to require the obedience in the form of stepping up, taking action and working on yourself, your health, and your wealth. Do all those things and avoid the traps, the traps of the flesh, the traps of the eyes, the traps of the pride. As Chris mentioned, be aware of those. And you might think that evil looks dirty and, and disgusting. No, it looks pretty and it's alluring and it's going to be captivating. You have to have the discipline to ignore that and stay true to your direction and to your priorities and to your faith. How would you attack you? Identify that and defend those flanks. And then you might have those afternoon 5 p.m. guys, but who are your 3 a.m. guys? Or as Chris would also say, the refrigerator rights guys, right? If something were to happen to you, who does who do the people you care about most rely on? If you need help, who do you lean on? And are you leaning with vulnerability in the process? Because a lot of times to cultivate those relationships, it requires vulnerability. And you oftentimes need to be the leader and go first with that vulnerability to show the kinks in your armor because a clean armor has never gone to battle. Meek does not mean weak. Meek is controlled strength. And that is what we need to be as men. We need to be meek, control the strength and the, the masculinity within us, treat our bodies like our temple, avoid the smartphone to protect our minds and the stewardship of the dollar because it all comes down to service. And as Chris ended with, grieve with your wife, let your partner see your vulnerability and also get through those hard times together. Keep rising up, men, and showing up as I know you can. As always, you can reach out to Chris or myself because you do have a network of men out there looking to help you step up, and it would be an honor for you to tap in to either one of those groups. With that being said, guys, it would also be an honor for you to hit that like button, share, subscribe to the podcast if you got value from this. Share this with somebody you know can get value with it, from it as well. And leave us a rating to let us know how we're doing. It's the only way we improve is by hearing from you. And as we always say at the end of the episode, everybody wants the sunshine, but they don't want the rain. But you can't get the pleasure without first the pain. Let's grow.